Welcome. Today I'm going to uh, tell you about my experiences uh, learning to use ShockBot's rotary indexing head. And uh, this uh, indexing head, you know, you can think of it as a way to make uh, turned objects. Matter of fact, the example I'll use in this video is this uh, leg that I made for a federal style uh, drop leaf table. Uh, and uh, it was made in three sections. This is the prototype here of poplar. The actual leg was made in, uh, in walnut and uh, made in three sections. And uh, this was not done on a lathe. This was done on a shop bot. Uh, the advantage of using the shop bot was I was able to do these reads on this middle section uh, much easier. Well, actually, it's, that's not even a, really a lathe function. That would have had to have been done with, uh, with cutters moving longitudinally. So the, uh, the indexer will do that kind of thing for you. So let me talk a little bit about it. First of all, you've got the uh, head uh, piece, the headstock, which is very much like a lathe chucked headstock. It's driven by this uh, little stepper motor through a belt, pulleys, uh, you know, tooth pulley, so you get positive uh, engagement. And the idea is, is that uh, you hook this wire up to your control card uh, in the back of the machine, and this chuck rotates just a slight amount with each pass, and the bit just moves, you know, back and forth in the X direction. So. Uh, you got the headstock, you got the tailstock, which is very much like a, 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 a lathe tailstock. Uh, these both fit into the T grooves on the bed of the machine, so you have to remove your spoil board. And by the way, when I removed my spoil board, I put some tape down to show exactly where it had been, so that when I reinstalled it, it was in the exact same place as it had been previously. Now this tailstock. Uh, has a little knurled ring here to, to move the, uh, the, you know, in and out. It only moves about a quarter of an inch, so it's not a great deal of movement, but it's enough to get your work in and out. Uh, and the uh, headstock can be tightened with these two little uh, wrench uh, pieces that they gave you with the, with the indexer. Same thing with tightening the tailstock. Normally when you're cutting on a uh, CNC machine, you have X movement, Y movement, and Z movement. Well, with a rotating, uh, a, a rotary indexer, you only have the X and Z movement. The Y movement comes in with the actual rotation. So you'll never see your spindle moving in the Y direction. It'll only move X and Z, and to get that Y movement, <laughs> the spindle rotates. So let's go ahead and take a look a little bit on how this gets set up, uh, how your file gets set up on the computer. If you think about it, the file you set up has to somehow know what the uh, cutter is supposed to do around the entire 360 degrees of rotation. So instead of having a, a flat piece of work that you have, you know, 10 inches X and 8 inches Y, and you can see that somehow you got to make that Y wrap around the piece of, of, uh, of material, the stock. And so Vectric uh, Aspire has a wrapping function. If you open up Aspire, don't open a file yet, just go to the open page and go up to uh, Gadgets. Down at the bottom they have this wrapping and you just slide on down here to uh, Wrapped Job Setup. Click that and you're going to get a setup page. All you got to do is measure the length of the work you're going to be, uh, you know, of your stock and the diameter of the stock. Fill all that in there. And then uh, we're going to tell it to uh, use the X axis as the back and forth for the, uh, for the spindle and that the, uh, the Y values will wrap around that, uh, uh, you know, that cylinder. So if you can imagine, you know, back when you were making cookies with a rolling pin and you'd, you'd lay out some dough and you'd, you'd take that rolling pin and you'd, you'd, you'd put it onto the dough and sometimes the dough would just wrap right around the rolling pin. 
Well, that's the same idea here. We're just going to take this design, which uh, we think is uh, supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, a cylinder, and kind of uh, work it as a flat thing uh, that can then be wrapped around that cylinder. Okay, and so down here we're going to uh, use simple cylindrical wrapping. And finally, the last thing is uh, we got we got to know where the z-axis zeros at. And the easiest way to do this is just to imagine a line going right down the center of the axis of the cylinder that you're going to cut. Make the z zero on that line so the the radial thickness of the cylinder would be the same as the thickness of a flat piece of work that you're going to work on. And once you got that all figured out, just hit OK, and what pops up is a flat surface that we're then going to go and work on. So let me go ahead and open up the file that I used for the top section of that leg. You notice the workpiece here is just like I showed you when I used the wrap job setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the profile of that leg, of that top part of that leg, and uh, just go ahead and do a uh, sweep of that profile along the y-axis. In other words, if I was to look at this in a 3D view, you'd see that what we've done is we've made that profile just sweep up the y-axis. Now later what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take that profile and we'll wrap it. So if we go up to the toolpath tab and come on down to uh, drawing toolpath and come on all the way down then to uh, wrap the y values around the x-axis, it goes ahead and draws the actual piece that we're trying to cut. Now, there's a whole lot more detail on how to do this in the tutorials on the Vectric website. So I encourage you to go to Vectric.com and under the uh, support section, Tutorials, uh, they've got tutorials that take you all through this wrapping process. You know, once the model is made here, then we can go ahead and go over the toolpath side and make toolpaths, which I've already done. And uh, so let's, let's go ahead and see what those tool paths look like just in the, you know, the XY. Okay, now that would be fine if we were cutting this as a plaque, but we're not. We're trying to cut a cylindrical object. So let's go ahead and just reset that preview and go up here again to our tool paths tab to tool path drawing and wrap the Y values around the X axis. And now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. And then you can see that this is going to cut a piece that looks pretty much like what we're after. So now it's time to go ahead and save the tool paths. Okay, here's where you got to pay a little bit of attention. Normally you'd save tool paths in just a XYZ post processor so that when you put your flat work on the bed it would cut in the XYZ direction but in fact this has to cut in a rotary direction so the post processor to be used has to be one that's made for indexing. ShopBot does have that post processor I got it ShopBot indexer in inches and if you don't happen to have this on your computer there's a very good tutorial on the shopbottools.com website that TJ put together for the basics of using the indexer and he'll tell you exactly how to find this post processor if it doesn't show up on your list. But here it is. I go ahead and save all these tool paths with that post processor and that will allow my desktop machine to recognize that this is rotary. Now. I still have to get the desktop set up to work rotary and display the proper values. So besides just attaching the indexer itself, I also go into my ShopBot 3 software and in the values tab under the display values, I'm going to go and tell the, the, machine, the software that the number of axes we're dealing with is not three, but in fact five. 
And the reason is, is because that will bring up what's called the B axis. The B axis is a rotary axis. And you notice it's in degrees. So that when the uh, software reads the toolpath file, it will use the X, the Z, and the B values. It will ignore the Y values because, as I said earlier, we're not going to let the spindle move in the Y direction. I put a one inch diameter hole. Uh, in this case, it's two inches deep. It's deep enough for the dowel that's going to uh, go in from the uh, top part of the leg. And that fits in a chuck that is much like uh, any lathe uh, chuck. And uh, it has um, dogs that will grab the inside of the hole. And on the, the, uh, the tailpiece has a pin that will fit into the uh, little hole that I drilled in the center of the pin. So I simply put that there onto the, uh, the headstock and then using this knurled ring bring the tailstock into the hole. There's a couple of small wrench handles that come with this that I'll simply tighten up. I've already firmed up the uh, tailstock but now I can give it a little extra tightening that way. And by the way Several times through the first couple of minutes of cutting, I'll tighten this up again because I found that uh, as the pin, uh, as the piece uh, vibrates a little bit, the uh, pin gets a little bit loose in that hole. I need to tighten that up just a little bit to make sure I'm nice and firm. Now I'll check for rotation. I've got the uh, shop bot turned on so that the stepper motor has power to it, so I should not be able to rotate this by hand. If you can rotate it by hand, it may mean that the set screws holding the pulleys on between the motor and the headstock have loosened up. Uh, that happened to me. I went ahead and replaced them with a little Loctite, and that seemed to solve the problem. Um, but I always do check just to make sure they're nice and firm. At that point, I'm ready to, uh, to uh, get my machine set up to, uh, to, to operate. Now, the way the software works is the Z zero point uh, can be selected to be either the surface of the work or the center of the pin in the tailstock. I choose the center of the pin in the tailstock since my surface here uh, is not precise. You know, I may be a little bit wider in diameter than, the, than I planned, but the pin is where the pin is, no problem. So what I've done, I've made a little block here that is the exact height of that center pin and I've marked a position on my uh, board here that I can set this and if I zero my uh, cutter to the top of this block I know it's exactly zeroed to where that center pin is and so that's worked very well and I just went ahead and marked that block uh, so that I know where to use it all the time. I don't lose it. I know, I know to use it all the time. Uh, the other thing that's important is to know where the XY zero point is. And so that's something, you know, you calculate in the software. In my case, the Y zero point is right down the center of this axis at seven inches of Y. And the X zero point is four and a quarter inches from the corner of the machine. So if I just do my uh, initial lineup in the morning, uh, setting XY to zero, uh, and then move the spindle to the x equals 4.25, y equals 7 point, I'll end up right here and that's where I want to start my cuts. And at that point you do a, Z, a Z2 command which zeroes, it calls that now XY0. That's important that that ends up being called XY0 on your uh, ShopBot uh, 3 display. Uh, because if you don't do that, then the machine might try to cut in here where you have metal. And that doesn't work real good. Just trust me on that. Um, okay, so we're ready to go ahead and do our setup.
and with the machining done the legs are all glued up and ready for finishing. Thanks for watching. Thank you.